Hi, I'm Alex McCrickard, and this is the fishing port for the month of December in Virginia. We're coming to you today live from our boardroom here at our headquarters office. We've got the bear and the, uh, and the, and the deer here keeping me company. Um, in this month's report, I'm going to show you guys a uh, potential state record fish that was recently encountered by DWR staff, and I'll tell you what lake you need to go to to try to catch it yourself. We're also going to cover general conditions and trends across the state as we're moving into the latter part of December here. Um, and we're also going to cover uh, updates on agency trout stocking, as well as our walleye and sawguy tagging program. Once again, December has been a really wet month across the state here in Virginia. Today we've got pouring down rain here in Richmond, and areas to the west of us are getting some snow accumulation. One thing that you need to keep in mind when fishing in the wintertime is water temperature. As our water temperatures across our lakes and streams in the state drop into the low 40s and even down into the 30s, this really impacts the fish. So as water temperature decreases, it tends to slow a fish's metabolism down. Ultimately, the enzymes that a fish uses to digest its food are slow acting in cold water. Therefore, this decreases the metabolic rate of, of our fish. So fish don't have to eat quite as much to maintain their body weight in colder water. Now this is important to keep in mind when you're fishing, and it can really pay dividends to actually fish low and slow in cold water throughout the winter months. And this is applicable to fishing for trout, as well as fishing for largemouth bass in rivers and in lakes. If you're fishing in the wintertime, a low, slow presentation can be really critical and beneficial to your angling success, as fish aren't gonna be moving hard and fast for you know, your lures or your flies like they normally would um, in warm water conditions in the spring, summer, and fall. So that's kind of an important bit to keep in mind. Recently, our agency staff has been busy and actively out stocking uh, many water bodies across the state, especially in our urban program waters. Um, this is really great because it gives anglers that live in urban metropolitan areas a chance to get out and actually fish for trout when they would normally have to drive an hour and a half or more. Anglers fishing in the Richmond metropolitan area can try their luck at Shields Lake or nearby Dory Park in Henrico County. Opportunities also exist in Hampton, Fredericksburg, Lynchburg, and Alexandria. Make sure to follow our trout stocking schedule online and plan your trip accordingly. Also, when you're winter fishing, it's essential that you prepare and dress for the weather. Make sure you watch the forecast, make sure you're dressed properly. Whenever I'm out on a river or stream, I always have an extra change of clothes uh, and a towel in my car. And if I want a float trip in the winter months, I've got a dry bag with an extra change of clothes and a towel in the dry bag. It's always important to take uh, the proper precautions before getting on the water. And as always, wear your life jacket. This fall, agency biologists have been busy sampling water bodies all across the state and tagging walleye and sawguy in waters where they're stocked. Fisheries biologist Scott Herman recently encountered this beautiful seven plus pound sawguy while sampling at Lake Chesden on the Chesterfield Dinwiddie County line. This sawguy, a hybrid of the walleye and sauger, would be a potential state record fish if caught on rod and reel. Keep in mind, if you do catch a potential state record fish, it has to be weighed on a certified scale and it has to be witnessed by a DWR staff member before you complete your application. This fish was one of many walleye and sauger that were recently tagged while sampling at Lake Chesden. Yeah, we're out here on Lake Chesden doing some of our fall, late fall sampling. Collected a saw guy. This is one of the fish that was stocked in the 2019. We'll get a length on this fish. Um, we already weighed it, but just a uh, you know, 352, 352 millimeters. Part of our statewide tagging program. $20 reward tags. We're kind of locking them into play just below the, the dorsal fin. Getting them in place there. If anybody catches this, you got to wait till it's 18 inches to harvest, but you can still cut the tag off and get a $20 reward. You know, the red tag here, tag number 281. You know, nice little fish. You know, it's grown pretty well over its uh, first year and a half in the system. I'm going to let her go over here and wish her on her merry way. As you can see, our walleye and sawguy tagging program not only generates excitement about the fishery, but it can also inform us about migration, age, growth, and exploitation, which further influences management decisions. Thanks for tuning in to this month's fishing report. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please comment below. We'll be happy to answer them. Also, make sure to watch our new video on the, on the uh, Stanton River, uh, highlighting the blossoming walleye and sawguy fishery that's really coming into, into form over the last few years. The video not only covers the management of the fishery, but also gives you tips and tricks on how to catch walleye in a riverine system. 
Uh, the link to the video is in the caption below. Best of luck, and we'll see you next time.